Welcome back. I'm super excited to bring you the top interview questions for DevOps. My name is Syed and I'm an enterprise architect and a senior project manager with over 20 years of experience and teaching over 1 million students online. So in this lecture, I'm going to cover real world interview questions that you were asked within a DevOps interview. The list is not exhaustive, but it's going to give you a solid understanding of what to expect within a DevOps interview. So by the way, if you have not subscribed or hit the bell notification, please do so, so you can get the latest courses, tutorial, and latest technologies. So let's get right down to it. The first question you may be asked, explain what DevOps is all about. So it is a newly emerging IT field, which is nothing but a culture or practice that collaborates between operations and software developers. Operations team, software developer teams, and it focuses on delivering software products faster and lowering the failure of releases. What are the key aspects and the principles behind DevOps? The key aspects are behind DevOps are structure infrastructure as code, for example, continuous deployment. You could have continuous delivery. You'll have monitoring, security. Next question, explain how infrastructure as a code is executed within AWS. So code for infrastructure will be in JSON format and the code will be organized into files called templates. So you could use these templates and deploy it within AWS and managed in various stacks. So through CloudFormation service, it actually can create the template, you can delete resources, delete various tools or different services within AWS. So question, list some of the DevOps tools. First, Jenkins, Nagios. There could be Elasticsearch, for example, Logstash, Kibana. All these are tools that you can use within your DevOps pipeline. Of course, you need to know some of these tools as well. Next question, explain how you handle revisions. The approach to handling version control or revisions is basically using GitHub so everyone can view the repository or the code. And you can post the checklist for the last revision for any unsolved issues to be resolved. Question, what is the difference between Ansible and Puppet? So, today DevOps professionals need to manage and control a huge number of servers, right? So for this, you need exponential growth in computing as well as new technologies such as virtualization and cloud computing. So Puppet and Ansible are the tools used for managing large number of servers. They're configuration management, right? They're also called configuration management tool just like I mentioned earlier and allows the admin to execute commands on many server servers simultaneously using scripts. So the idea is to maintain and configure servers at a single time. Next question, what are the benefits of using version control systems, right, or VCS? So the key benefits of version control basically are that version control system, VCS, think of this as that all the workers are allowed to access the file freely at any time. It also allows, you know, merging changes into a common version. It's designed to help multiple people so they can collaborate and then use these files and making sharing easy between or among developers. It's important for documents that require a lot of redirecting and revisions to keep an audit trail as well. So it helps you in that respect. It permits all the team members to have access to a complete history of the entire project that you're working on, right? So you can actually use a central server and then host the repo there. So they're all basically, you know, inside the VCS, everything is uh, basically all these documents are stored in a repository and then they're accessible by developers. Next question, what are the different phases in DevOps? So DevOps is mainly classified into six different areas, right? First is of course planning. Any software development planning is key and is very important. So this phase basically involves understanding the project itself with the ultimate goal of, you know, keeping in view the stakeholders or the client. So it's also important that the organizations are trained on tools and metrics and have enough clarity of the project itself. Development phase would actually get the project built by designing and writing code and then defining tests, right? Having the QA doing the testing. So in managing applications, for example, operations with data, developers store code, 
you know, within, the, within their IDE or within the respective repository. Continuous integration, right next, this automates the mechanism and validation and testing. And this has a unique feature that ensures that the development environment is properly configured and then integrates with the remaining applications. So automated deployments basically allows a smooth flow of the entire process within the pipeline from start to finish. And of course, in an automated manner using different tools. So the idea is that all these phases with the DevOps is important to understand. And then of course you have operations, right? All operations related to DevOps have a continuous uh, life cycle process, right? And there, any dynamic change in the infrastructure would flow through the pipeline. And this provides opportunities for transformation, scalability, and monitoring. Next question. Selenium. What is Selenium? Selenium is an open source tool that is used to automate web applications and of course browser-based testing as well. There are many components of Selenium. For instance, some of them that I'm going to talk about and highlight the components of Selenium are, for example, there is a Selenium IDE itself, right? Which integrate development environment and is one of the simplest framework of Selenium Suite itself. It has an easy record and playback function, which allows you to configure tools that provides easy learning, right? So the tester is uh, basically has the knowledge of JavaScript, okay? And write scripts to use that particular Selenium tool. So Selenium RC remote control is also another tool that is part of Selenium that provides support for different programming languages like Ruby, for example, PHP, Java, and so on. Then there's Selenium WebDriver, mainly the extension of Selenium RC, but it also supports the latest browsers and various multiple platforms. It's created to basically take a look at web pages where how the page can change without reloading the page itself and directly involve automation within the browser. So the idea is that you can actually use Selenium to test as a quality assurance tester. Let's take a look at the next question. What is the purpose of configuration management in DevOps? So configuration management helps in automating tasks that are otherwise time consuming and very difficult to work with. Okay, so it brings consistency in groups and processes into products by streamlining design, documentation, control, and implementation of changes during various phases of the entire project. Next question, what is the purpose of AWS in DevOps? So AWS basically supports the automation of manual tests and processes that help develop, build applications more faster and more efficiently. And these processes can be deployment, development, test workflows, configuration management, and container management, such as Docker containers. Next question. What is centralized versus distributed version control system? So in a centralized repository system, the repo is located in a central location, of course, and clients can access the system when they actually need something. In such a version control system, the repository is always updated with the latest changes and the changes are directly committed to the central core repository. And of course, all clients have access to the latest code available. Distributed version control. Everyone in the team has their own repository, which is a mirror of the central repository. Okay? And it provides flexibility to the developer and one can work offline especially if you have remote developers and only changes that have to be committed to the central system, you need to be online. And this makes distributed v VCS faster and more efficient. And it helps developers to work on their own terms. Next question, what is Canary release? It is basically a pattern that introduces software incrementally, right? So in a controlled manner, you can make the code available to the user before making it available to a complete user set, for example, right? And some best practices for DevOps success that you need to know are essential best practices, for example, are implementation. Continuous delivery means just continually processing, going through the pipeline, right? So whatever defects are found, they are being fixed as the code flows through the pipeline itself. Let's take a look at next question. What is git stash? Git stash command is used to save the changes temporarily in a working directory. And this gives developers a clean directory to work on, and they can later merge these changes within the workflow. 
So if this command is used, the changes in the trap files are used within the working directory. Okay, and you can use it as many times within the directory. And it's used as git stash, by the way. Next question, what is a merge conflict and how can it be resolved? That's a common question. So merge conflicts occurs when changes are made to a single file by multiple people at the same time. So due to this, Git will be able to tell which of the multiple versions is the correct version. To resolve the conflict, we should create a repo, add a file, and then create a branch, and then edit and commit the changes. The next step is to merge the new branch into the master branch, right? Once that is done, it clearly shows the difference and the difference version of the file and where the edits need to be made to remove the conflict. Next question. DevOps has something called CI. What is it and what's the purpose? CI is continuous integration within DevOps. And CI is a development practice in which developers integrate code into a shared repository multiple times in a single day. Continuous integration within development and testing enhances the quality of software and reduces the total time required for delivery. The developer has, you know, created the broken the build into different code runs, right? Could fail. As such, other developers are not able to sync with the shared source code repository without introducing errors into the workspace. So this disrupts the collaboration, right, process. So therefore, as soon as the CI build breaks, it's important to identify and correct the problem immediately. The CI process includes basically integration, regression testing, right? You can integrate those and QA testers can come in and do the testing. If the test fails, the CI build is considered unstable, which is common during an agile sprint, for example, which is an ongoing process. Next question, what is Jenkins pipeline? Jenkins Pipeline is a suite of you know, services that supports the implementation and integration of Jenkins as continuous integration pipeline. So I've listed some of the questions, right? So there are the top questions that you may encounter during the DevOps interview. So the chances of securing DevOps jobs, these questions and explanations are going to help you secure a job. Okay, so go through some of these questions if you need to check back on the other questions I have them on the timeline so you can simply click on the certain question that you're looking for and then you can view and take a look at the explanation as well and of course make sure you comment so that if you have additional questions that come into your mind I'll be happy to answer and give you the explanations further because there are other tons and tons of other questions that may also become relevant as you go through some of these important questions and try to secure a DevOps position. Or if you're entry level and you wish to get into the DevOps field and you have uh, you know, a couple of certifications under your belt, these questions are definitely going to help you in working forward and growing your career. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy these questions. And if you have any questions, post in the discussion area, comment below so I could answer them. With this, good luck, and I'll see you in the next lecture.